If you knew what they knew, you could have an incredible voice in just three months. Let me show you how. Cause like, what are they gonna do? Like jump over the counter and kill me for a pretzel? The more you know about what's possible and how to do it, the more freedom you have. Police Chief Wiggum. Mm hmm an elephant just knocked over your mailbox. Okay. If they can change their voice at will, so can you. By listening to yourself and dozens of other people who speak on stage and on camera for a living. Now let's get into the fun stuff, changing the sound of your voice at will. Seth MacFarlane and Hank Azaria are two of the most famous and successful voice actors in the whole world. What most people don't realize that professional voice actors a lot of the time use their own natural speaking voice for many roles. What his New Year's resolution? And silly and crazy voices for a very small percentage. I want to travel more because uh, I've been meaning to visit your mother's bedroom. And of course it does help if you have a beautiful sounding speaking voice to get the role in the first place. So today Today I'd like to break down two of their most iconic roles on TV doing those amazing character voices and show you exactly what they're doing. In this first clip on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Seth MacFarlane does five of his most iconic Family Guy voices. Let's have a listen. I'm gonna start by shoplifting from Wetzel's Pretzels. Like, what are they gonna do, like jump over the counter and kill me for a pretzel? <laughs> you don't have the guts to kill me, Wetzel's Pretzel. Starting today, no more diaper. No more diaper. I'm gonna hold it, oh, oh, so maybe 2025. I'm gonna quit smoking and start vaping. Uh, I'm gonna get unbanned from That's Hinge. Good. All right. <laughs> Let's stop there for a second, see what he's doing. The very first thing that's going to hold anyone back to becoming a good communicator is this. If you don't stay calm under pressure, you will never get verbal fluency. Now verbal fluency is what Seth has in spades. It means that he's so calm and confident under pressure that he can just keep speaking with no stopping. If you can do that too, you can become a great communicator regardless of the sound of your voice. We're gonna to get to the voice in a minute. So. Tip number one, stay calm under pressure. Number two, I see my speakers doing this all the time. When they're put on the spot at the end of a presentation and asked a question that they weren't ready for, they, uh, they freeze and they don't know what to say. The ability to think on one's feet is the most important skill that you can have as a speaker. So tip number two is the ability to think on your feet. Now when you're calm and you practice this skill, being thrown questions and being able to answer them off the cuff without getting all riled up and without your brain freezing, then you're on to great communication skills. And number three is Seth is fully self-expressed. In other words, he expresses himself no holds barred. He does all these crazy amazing sounds and he doesn't get embarrassed or humiliated or shy or laugh at himself at all. He takes everything lightly and silly. So number three is learn to become fully self-expressed. The only way to do that is to continually make sound and work on your mindset. Next, we're gonna move into voice skills. What they're doing with their voices to make those crazy and interesting sounds. Oh, you're doing the voices, you draggle tail gutters now. And the reason that we're doing this is simple. It's because if they can change their voices at will and use their instrument for this job, you can too in your everyday life. Not for always silly sounds, of course, but just to improve the sound of your voice. Let's have a look what Seth MacFarlane does with the role of Peter on Family Guy. Here's the clip. Oh, I can't wait to see all my old classmates. This is gonna be so much fun, isn't it, Peter? Oh, sure, it's a blast being in a room full of people you don't know. I'd rather stay home and watch grass grow. Okay, what he's doing, if you look at his face very, very carefully on the screen, you'll see that he's moving his jaw and his tongue in a different way. He's actually making everything a bit lower. Imagine speaking a low pitch down here. Instead of up here, your voice box actually drops down. So when we have a dropped voice box, we have a deeper sound, which makes us sound a little different. So right now, I'm having a dropped voice box, but that's too open for this particular sound. To make this silly sound, we need to drop the voice box and change the sound into the nose a little bit and make these spaces a little bit smaller to watch grass grow. So that means I have to change my articulation, change my cheek shapes, 
and also change my larynx. It's a simple thing, but if you don't know about the instrument and how it works, it might be a little difficult to figure that out, but I can hear it. He's got a little bit of nasality, a dropped larynx, and a small resonant space. That makes the Peter sound in Family Guy. Super cool. Now the interesting thing is that every time he does a new voice, it's a very different sound. So there you have it, easy steps that you can do. So for example, if your voice is a little bit too high, you can drop your voice box. If your voice is a little bit too, say, airy, you can make the pipe smaller so it's a little bit more clean. Simple moves that you can do too. Let's move on to the next one. Now we're going to dive into a very different clip. This is Hank Azaria on The Larry King Show. Now during the interview, he was again put on the spot to do some of his most iconic sounds from The Simpsons. This one, he's doing Chief Wiggum. Let's have a listen. You, have any, uh, you don't have any legal problems that I should know about, do you, Larry? <laughs> any legal trouble? How about any donuts, do you? <laughs> donuts huh? Now what he's doing is a little bit similar to the actual Peter character that Seth was doing, but it's a smaller space, it's a higher pitch. If you've noticed, your ears will change. Over the next couple of videos, you will learn so much more about voice that you'll hear differently. That's the magic of voice training. It changes the way we listen and changes the way we sound. So when we listen to this, Hank Azaria actually does this. He keeps his jaw shut. He keeps his larynx in neutral, a slightly higher position. It's not down here anymore, it's sort of up here. So it gives you a higher, narrower sounding pitch. He's also making a very small space with his resonant spaces, otherwise it would sound very open. It's the opposite of open, it's very small. If you notice a lot of cartoon characters are actually really pointy sounds. They're really pointy sounds. If you look at his face, you'll notice that his face goes to the side. Chief Wiggum. So let's have a look at that clip one more time and you can listen to it with different ears. We're listening for higher pitch, movement of the jaw to make everything small and a pointy, strong sound. It's not as nasal as Peter was though. Very different character to the family guy. How about any donuts, do you have any donuts on you? <laughs> and of course, with the American accent, the only way that he moves the jaw is problems, to make the O sound a little bit bigger into the R sound for the American vowel. But that's about it, you don't have any problems. So if you do that with your mouth and change the shape of your mouth, make everything really small so it's a pointy sound, no nasality and a higher larynx, bingo, Bob's your uncle. So same sort of thing. When you learn how to move these pieces into different shapes and directions, your voice changes incredibly. You can really play with those sounds. So let's go back and do a quick summary of what we've learned today. Number one, the ability to stay calm under pressure is absolute key to your success as a speaker. Number two, the ability to think on your feet when you're thrown a question unexpectedly. If you keep practicing that every single day, being put on the spot, you will get better at it. Number three, be willing to be fully self-expressed. Make some noise, go crazy, get out of your comfort zone, otherwise you will never be a great voiceover actor or even a great speaker and communicator in life. Number four, is learn how to feel when your larynx goes up and the larynx goes down because you can change the pitch of your voice at will anytime you want. You can go to a low pitch for more authority or more high pitch for excitement. But if you stay on boring monotone all the time, nobody's going to listen to you. And number five, Learn to move the muscles in your throat so you can change them every single time you speak. Do you want a more narrow sound so you can project your voice with a bit of edge? Or do you want a more open sound for a bit more polish and eloquence? It's completely up to you. You can change your voice anytime you want. I hope you've got some value out of today. I'll see you next time.